Let's go now to our friend Bimnet Abibi from Galaxy Trading. As always, Bimnet, welcome back to Galaxy Brains. Thanks for having me. Big day today, Fed day, CPI day. Tell us what happened. Um, so you got a, a pretty soft CPI print, a 0.2 month on month in core CPI. Um, that was really good reading. You saw, uh, you know, so, some of the hotter points recently cool off a little bit. Things like uh, insurance prices um, and, and and some of the other metrics. Uh, but high level, this was a soft inflation print that came in below market expectations. And the substance of it was uh, supportive of, you know, continued kind of slowdown in, in, in inflation prints on, on a go forward basis. Um, to caveat that, you know, you still have, you know, elevated uh, core inflation, right? If you annualize and compound a, a 0.2 month on month, that actually takes you close to like a 2.7-ish uh, on an annualized basis. And so that's still above the 2% target. Um, in addition, uh, you know, you super core inflation, which is uh, services inflation x x shelter, uh, came in at 0.22 month on month, uh, and that is a very welcome uh, sort of decline. Uh, I, I believe last month it was uh, 0.42 ish, and so that was a, a very meaningful de decline. However, the headline super core, uh, you know, number is still on an annualized basis is still 4.8 percent. And so it's 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 a very uh, high number, um, and then with the Fed, most importantly, um, you got you know pretty meaningful um, information at, at, out of the, the the summary of economic projections and and the dot plot. Um, it showed that you know folks were only expecting one cut in 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 the rest of 2024 and four cuts for uh, 2025. Uh, and you know, the, the market perceived that as, as a little bit, uh, hawkish, um, you know, in, especially in the context of a soft inflation print that, that we got, uh, earlier, uh, this morning. And so there, there's a little bit for, for everyone. I think, you know, the main message that Powell tried to get through in the, in the press conference was that they're going to be data dependent. Um, and that's what he's been saying for, for the past, you know, couple of meetings now, uh, and so, you know, you got a bunch of information, uh, it was more, more, more dovish than expected, particularly in the context of, uh, uh, of the CPI print that that was fairly soft this morning and you saw a pretty aggressive rate rally that sustained itself. Um, so you, you're seeing, you know, 10 year yields, um, uh, at 4.30, um, you know, over a 10 basis point drop on the day. You've seen um, equities rally, um, you know, percent and a half in the NASDAQ, you know, 1.2% on, on S&P. Uh, and so, you know, risk is like the number. Um, dollar is, is weaker on it. Um, I think that's an appropriate market reaction. Um, I would just say, though, that, you know, there are still pockets of the economy that, that are doing great and they're, they're, they're sticky parts of, of inflation. And ultimately, um, the question uh, about where you can take rates up to uh, on a or down to on a, on a terminal uh, basis uh, is still up in the air. Um, and if you look at the dot plot, uh, the, the the neutral rate, uh, you know, did did go up to two two point eight percent. And so I think that there's more of a realization in the market and from FOMC participants that the long run uh, neutral rate um, is higher than than we had previously thought. Uh, and even if you do get a couple of soft inflation prints, uh, it doesn't, you know, take away from the fact that the the rate that makes the economy not overheat, uh, but not contract that much, um, is still higher than 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 where we uh, were thinking it was going to be, you know, years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I think you're right. Something for everyone. A little bit of a mixed bag here too. With non-farm payrolls, were pretty hot right on Friday last we're week. We're hot. Yeah. So the employment picture doesn't look like it's slowing down really, right? And now, but but the and then also I saw one of the other ones. You correct me on that too, or, or add your your actual knowledge of this. Yeah, subject, no, I mean that it's 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 so mixed though. Like they're poor. Like I mean, owner owner of the rent I saw conference. was pretty pretty hot in CPI also still right. Yeah, no, I think it came in at, at 0.4. Um, and like shelter is a big part of people's expenses. And and like, yeah. you know, I was in an Uber driver today and he's like, I work six and a half days a week and I need to pay for a queen's apartment and, 
you know, I'm paying 1500 for a two bedroom. And he's like, you know, when he was in New York, like a while back, he was paying like 600 a month for, for rent. And so the absolute level of prices is, is still, you know, super high. And just cause the rate of which those prices are increasing, it, you know, is cooling doesn't mean that, you know, the, a lot of folks aren't in pain because of how prices, how high prices are. Uh, and incomes have certainly not kept up with the overall price increase that you've had over, over the past three years. Like, you know, folks have not gotten a 25% raise in, in the past three years. Right, and so, right. uh, on average at least. Uh, and so there, there's still that pain in, in, in the market. And that's why I think that the fed can't be, um, too, uh, aggressive or eager to to call success on 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 the kind of the the soft landing and that's why they probably shouldn't cut rates too quickly or, or too aggressively and then on, on the the uh, looking a little bit ahead uh sorry to get uh, off track yeah but looking Go a ahead. little bit ahead you also have trump trumponomics most likely coming and you know as we've discussed that that's inflationary um and yeah but back to your point about the labor market the it, the data is just so uh like all over the place so like if you look at ism services uh and the employment component there it's like below 50 it's at 47 that's contracting last week you had a 300k miss in in in, in jolts the the job openings figure you've had uh some of the high frequency point uh data points like the indeed uh job data kind of show show a slowdown uh, and ADP came in soft as well, which is, you know, the payment processor. And so when you throw in a non-farm payroll uh, headline number that's 275, you're like, well, that's not consistent with what I've been seeing in, in, in other things. Um, but, you know, there's also, uh, you know, the, the household survey versus for the employer survey and, and, and or the establishment survey, sorry. And there's a big disparity between the, the, the job figures there. Um, and there's also, you know, s some other kind of estimates that the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics puts into the, the non-farm payroll figure, uh, you know, the, the birth death stuff in terms of, you know, new businesses and how many employees that that typically generates and stuff. So there's, there's a lot of weird nuances that make the, the, the data picture a little unclear. Um, and the 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 job of the fed and this is what powell is saying is is to have the the tools to react uh, in the face of that uncertainty uh and so if if you've already cut too much or if if too much and really you know the labor the price data you know starts to to come in hot hot uh, again that it's going to you know put you in a much worse position in terms of tackling and tackling uh in, inflation and on the flip side as well, like you can really put yourself in a bind if, if you're the Fed. And ultimately, you know, they care about their credibility um, as well. Uh, and so they don't want to repeat the, the same mistakes of, you know, of, of COVID thinking that inflation wasn't going to come back. And so they really have to kind of be certain that inflation is going away to, to really start the, the easing cycle uh, in, in a meaningful uh, manner. Well, lots of interesting information. I saw, you know, it seemed like uh, Powell did say that they won't cut, uh, sorry, they won't hike this year, that that's off the table. The The dot plot shows yeah. no hikes, right? But um, we'll, we'll check in with you. It's a yeah, busy day. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I personally, I, I think he could be justified in, in hiking. There's, there's, you know, enough stuff. Uh, like it, it, if data goes uh, like higher, if, if we basically had a repeat of the first three months of the year uh, in terms of the, the inflation data, I, I would say that that hike should should be on the table. Um, but ultimately, like, I don't think that the Fed should be giving up optionality in, in any direction because you're one supply shock away. Uh, you're, you know, a couple of, of fiscal measures away from from the government. You're you know they're they're doing this stuff with with Fannie and Freddie where you know folks might might get uh, easier access to to home equity loans. There's some stuff in the works on 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 student loan forgiveness. Uh, long story short, I, I think there's a lot of politicians with an incentive to to make sure that uh, uh, their constituents uh, are feeling wealthier going into the the the, the poll booths and so that's going to be stimulative and that's inflationary and then on top of that you you've got a, a a potential presidential candidate that might bring on more inflationary policies and so you know i'm of the camp that you, you're supposed to keep optionality and you know not limit yourself and so i wasn't a big fan of of, 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 of you know 
taking hikes off the the table like that just because uh you know you're, you're meant to react to hot data and you just want to preserve that that optionality yeah and that's what they say they're going to do is react to the data so it is actually a little contradictory i mean if the data comes in hot then they very well might hike um but you know well yeah well, yeah and the the other thing to think about is is uh, you know sorry to <laughs> uh, keep going on this but like the, there was a, a figure uh, I think we spoke about it last week but there's three point two trillion dollars uh, flowing into the economy per quarter just from money market fund dividends and as uh, you know yields on on on, on T bills etc and from from dividends from from listed companies and so that's a lot of money and stimulus that's being provided as a function of high interest rate policy and so there's some folks that are on the more uh controversial side of you know kind of macroeconomic policy that are like these rates are actually stimulative uh, and if you look at like household wealth, you know, wealth per, per capita in the U.S., like all of these things are, are, are trending higher and and the positive, you know, rate environment hasn't really hurt stocks uh, that that much. And folks are also not inclined to sell their home or put their homes up for for sale if if uh, interest rates are low. And so uh, or interest rates are, are high. And, and so that there's been an element of, you know, supply being kept off the market and housing and, and therefore, uh, you know, the, the prices, you know, remaining elevated or, or staying sticky. Yeah. And so the, the, there's lots of kind of various elements that, that the fed is, is trying to navigate, but main takeaway from today is you got a soft inflation print, uh, one that you don't have to look too closely at. It's just good. You know, it's it's not like it's good and bad for the most part. It, it's it, it's good um, in the context of the data we've seen, in the context of, you know, what the Fed wants to see. And if we see more of those good prints, the Fed will will become easier in its in, in its monetary policy. Got it. Bimnetta BB from Galaxy Trading. As always, my friend, thanks for coming on Galaxy Brains. Mm-hmm.